Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're taking a look at the 2014 Toyota 4Runner. This has been refreshed for the 2014 model year, so it's not a completely new 4Runner. Let's dive under the hood, let's hop inside, and let's take a look. The first thing you'll notice about the 2014 4Runner is this all-new front end. Toyota decided they wanted to give the 4Runner a more aggressive look than they had in the past, and they've really accomplished that with this front end. It's sort of a frowning look here on this front grille, much more aggressive headlamps, and these interesting angry uh, little plastic side trim pieces here right by the fog lamp. These are not separate grills, so couldn't really call them that. They're just sort of plastic inserts in this very uh, machined and very interestingly designed front end. Not sure that I'd call the front end attractive necessarily. I think I preferred the 2013 model over this 2014 refresh model, but it definitely is more aggressive. Because 2014 is just a refresh of the 2013 model, none of the critical dimensions on the 4Runner change. So we have the same wheelbase, same size vehicle overall. That drops this 4Runner, even though there's a 7-seat option, smaller than the Jeep Grand Cherokee currently. It's more of a dedicated off-road vehicle than that Grand Cherokee has become, however, and that's really obvious when you take a look at these high-profile tires and the approach and departure angles in this vehicle. We don't have quite as much ground clearance as the Grand Cherokee. It's about two inches lower overall, and some of the approach and departure angles are not quite as favorable as the Jeep Wrangler line, of course, but Toyota has a solid off-road reputation. Not much has changed out back other than these new tail lamp modules here. We still have a two inch hitch receiver in the 4Runner, although towing capacity isn't as high as previous versions of the 4Runner with that old V8 that the 4Runner used to get. So the 4 liter V6, which we're going to take a look at in just a moment, is the only engine of choice, which means that towing in this vehicle is under 5,000 pounds, which is fairly low. You can actually get a decent number of crossover vehicles that will tow 5,000 pounds these days. Features which are carrying over from last year is this very handy power rear window, as well as the fact that the spare tire is under the 4Runner rather than on the back. Before we dive right under the hood of the 4Runner, there's one thing you need to know, and that's the 4Runner is the last body on frame traditional midsize SUV available in America. The Jeep Grand Cherokee has long been a unibody SUV, although it is probably the last true unibody SUV available in America as well. The big thing to know about a body on frame SUV is of course we have a body and then underneath it we have a frame. And you can sort of see it in this video, but there are actually frame rails underneath the car and that's where the drivetrain is attached. The body is then attached to that same frame. That means that the vehicle handles very differently than an American crossover that most of our viewers are probably used to by now. Toyota killed off the V8 4Runner a number of years ago, so the only engine you'll find under the hood of the 2014 model is this 4.0-liter V6 engine. It produces 270 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a Toyota truck 5-speed automatic transmission that sends power to the rear wheels only by default. There are two different all-wheel drive systems available for 2014. The first is a part-time four-wheel drive system with a two-speed transfer case. It's not a center differential, it's just a transfer case, so the front and rear axles are locked together via that transfer case. If you opt for the limited edition 4Runner, then you can get a Torsten center differential, but there's no low-range mode in that setup. Since Toyota lent us the trail model prototype for a few hours, we have the locking rear axle in this model. A locking front axle is not available in the 2014 4Runner, however, Toyota does include an electronic traction control system that's tweaked from your normal traction control system. In a standard vehicle, when traction control is active, it reduces engine power in addition to clamping down the brake on the wheel that's spinning. In this modified traction control system, it doesn't reduce engine power. It just tries to keep that one wheel spinning at the same rate as the other ones that are not spinning freely, thereby helping your forward progress and sort of acting like a locking differential. Toyota claims that the system can be more effective in certain off-road situations than a standard locking rear axle. Not exactly clear about that, but it is an interesting feature, and it's something that a number of other competitors are doing right now. 4Runner Limited models still have the X-Res shock absorber system, which is kind of a unique feature to these Toyota 4Runner models. Basically what happens is the top of the shock has a little tube coming out of it, and it connects the shocks diagonally in the vehicle, so the front left is connected to the rear right shock, and what that does is it allows the dampers to have a larger chamber available for both gas and fluid. So it acts like a larger damper in the Limited, allowing the car to have slightly better road manners. Toyota tells us that nothing substantive has changed for the 2014 model year in terms of seat design. However, this seat feels more comfortable than the 2013 model that they allowed us some time in as well. We have a multi-way power adjustable driver's seat with a two-way adjustable lumbar support. It has a decent range of motion, allowing the seat to get fairly high off the floor, which makes finding an ideal driving position for me fairly easy since I like a more upright driving position. We also have a tilt telescoping steering wheel, but the range of motion in this tilt telescoping design isn't very large. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of tilt and not a whole lot of telescope. 
Rear seat comfort in the 4Runner is good. The seat bottom and back cushions are a little bit more firmly padded than you'll find in your typical crossover vehicle that seats five. And the seat bottom cushion is a little bit higher off the floor than most crossovers as well. Personally, I find that more comfortable for adults. Because of the body on frame design and these very classic 4Runner lines, getting in and out of the back seats in the 4Runner is a little bit more difficult than most crossovers because this uh, C-pillar is kind of right in the way. It also obstructs my view on the outside, but that is a typical 4Runner styling cue. The rear seats in the 4Runner fold in a multi-step process. The seat bottom cushion folds forward, headrest folds down, and then the seat back folds flat. The seat back is now flat, but it's not flat with the cargo load floor. It's about two inches taller or so. So that means that pushing larger items from the cargo area right here on top of the back seats is a little bit more difficult, but it still folds flat, which is a nice feature. Another nice feature you'll find in the 4Runner is the seat backs fold in a 40-20-40 fashion. So you can fold just the center armrest and center seat portion flat to allow longer items to fit in the 4Runner. We also have a fairly large center armrest here with cup holders. Let's take a look at the interior. If you opt for the limited trim 4Runner, you get an entirely different seat back design with higher shoulders right here on the seat back, very much like an Acura seat. Over here on the doors, you'll find more soft touch material on every version of the 4Runner, including this faux stitching in red in our particular model. Going over here to the door, we have everything is in uh, basically the same location that it was in the 2013 model. Toyota's just changed the surfaces and the colors just a little bit for 2014. We have some faux aluminum trim here. This is not real metal. Black plastic trim, of course, here. The dashboard is hard plastic, makes it easier to clean if you're actually doing off-roading. Here in the center console, we have the six inch Toyota Entune system. There is a seven inch available as well, depending on the model of the vehicle. Single zone manual climate control. Automatic climate control is an option. Down here, you'll find the USB and auxiliary input ports for that Entune system. Because we're in the model with the two-speed transfer case, we get the two-speed transfer case shift knob right there. Automatic transmission shift knob. Down here, we'll find the button for that rear power glass. Two large cup holders. These are easily able to carry the largest cup holder available in a drive through You also have a removable insert there if you need to stick a larger soda in there if you just want to clean it. Moving on to the center armrest, we have the same contrasting red stitching going on there and a fairly decently sized center armrest uh, cubby right there. Um, it's surprisingly large given the fact that this vehicle is a rear wheel drive vehicle, but of course it's a body on frame type vehicle, so there's not much of a hump going on <clears throat> right here in the back like you'd find in a unibody crossover. Right here we have two power outlets in the rear seats. Over here on the driver's side, we get the same steering wheel that the new 2014 Tundra gets. This display button changes the screen modes right there between the two gauges. We have our phone buttons, voice command button. These buttons right here allow you to control the audio system over there in the center console. Right here we have a mode button that allows you to change modes and of course mute the system, volume up and down button, and a back button. Let's take a look at those gauges right now. We have a fairly typical four dial arrangement there been slightly refreshed for the 2014 model year. And if we go back over here to the driver's door, we now have all auto windows. We have a very limited time with this Toyota 4Runner because other journalists would like to see it. So we're just gonna paste in our review of the new 2014 Toyota Tundra's Entune system. It does operate exactly the same way, except the buttons are styled a little bit differently in that system. If you don't care about infotainment, then just follow those instructions down below to skip on over to the drive section of this review. The system is defined by having some physical buttons here, but most things are operated via this touch screen. We have a home button, which takes us back to this default home screen. Varies, of course, if you have navigation in your particular model. Apps takes us to our smartphone apps, as well as Entune apps, and navigation is one of those Entune apps. So you won't see a direct app button there uh, for the navigation system. Over here on the audio button, we can select our audio source. This is where the map card is kept. It's a secure digital micro card in this second generation system. And we have seek up and down buttons, the tune and scroll dial right here, and of course our volume and power button over here. This system is very snappy, just like the first generation Entune system. And Toyota's gone ahead and added a few additional features that weren't there in that first system. Most notably is of course that home screen. You can select and hold to add contacts and you can uh, make them your little shortcut buttons there for your phone interface. If the audio system was on, it would give you information right there about that audio source. We do have XM 
radio available in certain models of the Entune system. You can also get HD radio, that's an upgrade. The base 6-inch system uh, is your pretty basic iPod interface with visual uh, guide for that iPod. Voice commands, of course, for the iPod as well. Uh, no smartphone app integration in that base system, but we do get the backup camera as standard in all models of the Toyota Tundra. The iPod interface in Entune is very fully featured. It's also fairly snappy. We have full access to our playlist, genres, composers, artists, albums, etc. Uh, the interface is fairly speedy because it reads it off your USB or your iDevice in advance and then displays it on the screen. Over back here on the audio screen, you'll also notice we have iHeartRadio. We also have Pandora. Screen switches in this system are very uh, fast, very snappy. Um, you do need a smartphone connected to the system with the Entune app in order to use it. That app is available on Android as well as iPhones. It gives you access to um, the things like Bing, Pandora, iHeartRadio, MovieTickets.com, OpenTable, etc. Um, if you're back here on this main app screen, you'll see traffic and weather. Those are not provided by the smartphone app. These are now provided by HD Radio, so that's a little bit of a change from the last generation where those were provided by XM. There also are going to be some additional apps coming in the future, although Toyota hasn't really said what those will be. Overall, this system ranks very highly in this segment. Uh, it's just about as easy to use as Chrysler's Uconnect. It's more reliable than my Ford Touch. I think that I like the current generation GM system just a little bit better, although the voice commands in this Toyota Entune system have taken things to another level. In addition to full voice commands of your iDevice, as well as most entries in this screen, the system now has the ability to learn your particular vocal qualities. So you can actually go into a voice training section inside this system, read canned phrases off the screen, and the system will gradually learn to anticipate what you're trying to say better. So it'll just become better at uh, recognizing your particular voice, especially if you have an accent or different inflections or something out of the norm that the system is not quite used to. The navigation interface should be very familiar to you if you've used any modern Toyota products. Fairly high resolution, fairly decent graphics, and of course displays on-screen traffic as well. The system is very easy to use. Destination entry can be done either via the voice commands or via this little button on the screen. Entering an address into the system is fairly easy. We'll do one here for you just so you can see. There we go. All this data is flash-based, so it's fairly snappy on the response time. There we go. As you can see, searching for an address is very quick in this system. Uh, rerouting in this system is also very snappy, adding waypoints. Everything interacting with that nav system is very quick in the system because all the data is stored on that fast flash card right there uh, in the face unit. Um, so it's very different than the hard drive based system or the DVD based systems that people may be used to uh, because they took an awful lot longer to do those same routing functions. Out on the road, the 4Runner behaves pretty much exactly like you'd expect a body on frame SUV to behave. There's a decent amount of body roll in the corners like this as you can see on this roundabout. And there's a decent amount of pitch and dive when you step on the brakes or step on the accelerator pedal. Overall, the 4Runner handles fairly well and is fairly competitive in this segment, but the driving feel does suffer because of that body on frame design. Acceleration is a little bit leisurely thanks to this 4 liter V6 engine and the 5 speed automatic. It's not the equal of the Jeep Grand Cherokee by any stretch, and that's pretty much thanks to that new ZF8 speed automatic transmission in the Jeep Grand Cherokee. But the 4Runner is really designed for an off-road vehicle, and so a lot of these uh, body-on-frame feelings are associated with that body-on-frame, but also because of these high-profile tires. So some of this disconnected feeling we have in the steering here, so it feels like, the, like you turn the steering wheel and then a moment later the car turns, really has to do with those high-profile tires. But again, if you're going off-road, you need high-profile tires, so that's just one of those trade-offs that you need to make. So it's really important that you decide in your car shopping uh, what you're really after in a vehicle. If you're after better on-road performance, then something like a Jeep Grand Cherokee is going to be the car for you. If you're after more off-road performance, then something like this 4Runner is probably more your style. If you're only off-roading now and then, then that Jeep Grand Cherokee might do fine. But if you're going off-roading a decent amount, something more regular like every weekend, then the 4Runner is probably the better buy. This has been a very brief look at the Toyota 4Runner. We haven't had too much time, only about 50 miles or so in about three hours with this Toyota 4Runner on and off-road. So our experience is fairly limited and it's important to keep that in mind. 
But if you're after fuel economy, the 4Runner is also not a vehicle to look for because we've been averaging about 12 miles per gallon based on our driving style. The EPA says that this will score a little bit higher. I'd probably bet that the average person will get around 15 to 16 miles per gallon in the 4Runner just based on that 4 liter V6 as well as the 5 speed automatic. Fuel economy numbers are also influenced by the overall gear ratios in the vehicle. And the 4Runner has some interesting ratios going on. It has a fairly tall first gear and a fairly tall fifth gear. That means that first gear acceleration isn't exactly great in the 4Runner in terms of feel. And it's a good thing that the 4Runner has that two-speed transfer case available because you really do need it off-road. Toyota has not done anything for the 2014 model year to quiet the cabin, so we still have a decent amount more road and engine noise than you'd find in a modern crossover. If you like the 2013 4Runner, you'll like this 2014 model just that bit more. If, however, you're just out there looking for a rugged off-road vehicle with four doors, there's that four-door Wrangler. There's also the Toyota FJ Cruiser, which has a completely different style. You can't really discount the Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo when you compare it to something like this because you can get that with a two-speed transfer case as well. It has a bit more ground clearance than this Toyota 4Runner. It is a decent amount heavier, though, out on the road. Toyota is still a little bit more dedicated to off-roading from the factory with these higher profile tires than something like the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which has fairly low profile road tires given you know, the general genre of off-road vehicle. When you actually take a look at uh, tire size, it's quite important off-road. You don't really want a low profile tire. It's much easier to bend a rim. Uh, it makes traction a little bit more tricky. And that's something that Toyota has really stuck to with the 2014 4Runner. Toyota hasn't announced pricing for the 2014 4Runner yet, but we expect it to be pretty much the same as the 2013 model. So expect that SR5 model to start just over $31,000, expect the Limited to start just over $40,000, and expect a fully loaded 4Runner to end up somewhere north of $46,000. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been a very quick take on the pre-production 2014 Toyota 4Runner. Be sure and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos including a video on the production version of the 2014 Toyota 4Runner when we can get our hands on one in the coming months. Be sure and comment on this video, tell us what you liked and what you didn't like. Be sure and send me messages right here on YouTube and we'll see you next time.